We got Ben Macklemore coming up in like two minutes. Can you send an air check? Um, I'm going to have to figure out how you can send that in because it won't come to me. So, again, I'm just waiting on Ben McLemore to pop up. You know, he played for the Houston Rockets, played for Wellston. Hey, Storm. Played for Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Christian Life Center down in Texas. Also played at Kansas. So, you know, it's going to be a cool little interview. Um, DM me and I'm trying to figure out, I'll figure out, um, how to help you. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at G-U-U-R-L-M-E-L-A-N-I-E. You can DM me anytime. I can try to help. I'm going to try to add Ben McLemore because he's here now. Let's see. Now, y'all. Hey, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. How's the family doing? Good, everybody good. I heard California, Sacramento. Oh, y'all. Oh, you in California? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's big. You don't have to stay in Houston? Huh? You didn't have to stay in Houston? No, no, no. I came out here with the oh, that's what's so. up. So I'm just going to jump right into it. What or who inspired you to uh, pick up a basketball? Um, Geez, I think just being around basketball throughout my life. Uh, brother, uncles, cousins, um, all played a game of basketball. So just being around uh, my family and friends and things like that inspired me to do it. And obviously – you know, watching LeBron, Paul, Paul Pierce, and, you know, being able to see the Kansas greats and things like that play and, you know, told me, you know, I want to do this as well, so. Okay. So, I know you come from humble beginnings, reading all the articles, <clears throat> and actually living through the Ben McLemore phase at Wellston. Yeah. Um, just what made you decide to go to Oak Hill after the Wellston School District dismantled? Well, obviously, you know, when that happened, um, uh, what Misha was saying or what was going going down was that everybody was going to transfer to Normandy School District. And, okay. you know, being a Wellston, Westonian, uh, that wasn't happening <laughs> for me, especially being, a, you know, in the city rival um, that it was um, and all, all the, you know, long time history, you know, the, with Normandy and Wellston and stuff like that. So, I told myself right away I wasn't I wasn't doing it I wasn't going there so uh, but then you know when I guess when word got out and, and and my coach at the time Jed Coach Jed McCall you know came in and told me about the Oak Hill situation and you know I I thought it was a blessing to just get that school and you know and especially with the history behind that you know offer me to to go to school there and yeah, play there as well it was and amazing. Them. yeah so. That's how that went about. That's, that's what's up. And then you ended up graduating from Christian Life Center down in Texas. Yeah. Which is, okay, it's, which is funny because everybody, <laughs> when I tell a story and I told guys that uh, on my team now that, you know, I used to live out here. I used to live in Texas. Like, well, I'm like, yeah, I used to go to school out here in the Christian Life Academy out in Humble, Texas and stuff. So they're like, dang, you was all the way out there. I'm like, yeah, you know. It was either this or I wasn't going to no college. So I had to find mm -hmm. a way uh, to graduate, and I did, and, you know, the rest is history. That's what's up. Yeah. So 
when you think about Wellston High School, Oak Hill Academy, and Christian Life Center, which school molded the Ben McLemore that we saw at Kansas? Oh, Wellston, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Because you spent two years. You were two years My at first, Wellston, right? First three years of high school was there. Okay. And obviously, I grew up in Wellston, so I lived there. So the way we grew up and the way we played the game of basketball was, was different from what other people and, mm-hmm. and, and mentality you know, of the game. So that definitely, definitely Wilson had definitely and always still would be a part of me and, and throughout the course of my years playing the game of basketball. All right. So you went to my rival school. I like Mizzou. It's Mizzou sports all day. <laughs> I didn't feel going to Kansas. Kansas is legendary, Paul Pierce. Yeah. Like all the names that have come down the Kansas line and you got to be coached by Bill Self, like, just one of the biggest names in college basketball. Like, how did that feel coming from just a small town, oh, a small community man. in St. Louis? It, it it was it was tough. I would say it was tough coming from our, you know, living coming from Missouri, um, and going to you know out of state school, uh, rival school as well as that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the decision was tough between Missouri and Kansas. Uh, my mom was a big Mizzou fan at the time, uh, but my uncle, oh, my yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, and my uncle was a big Kansas fan because of Danny Manning. Um, and I grew up watching Kansas a lot. So the decision was tough, but, you know, I think I made the great, a great decision to go into Kansas. Um, but that rival, kansas Mizzou rival, was, was big. And obviously I didn't get the opportunity to play against them because of my year I sat out. Uh, but I was definitely looking forward to playing against, you know, Mizzou because I just know – the excitement and, and, and the way the fans are getting to it and involved, and it was going to be a great game. Like, my freshman year, it was. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, it was a great experience. Obviously, playing, playing alongside with great players and get, being coached by Bill Self, one of the greatest, obviously, like into the Hall of Fame. Um, it was amazing throughout my career in um, Kansas. That's crazy. And then you were drafted number seven based off of one season. Based off one season. That's yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a dream come true. Obviously, something that I always dreamed to do. I wanted to be an NBA player, and you know, I did everything I, I needed to do to put myself in position to get to the position I'm in now, and take care of from take care of my family, provide for my family uh, for a long time. So you're almost seven years in. What do you remember about draft night? Uh, special man, just having. Everybody I, I, that was been there with me, supporting my mom, my sisters, uh, my little brother, long live Kevin Blackmore, my little brother. You know, just looking back that that he was there with me, um, and just just walking across that stage, shaking David Stern hand, and just is like I did it, I made it. Uh, I, I beat a lot of obstacles. Uh, you know, I changed a lot as well. And I think it was just a dream come true to, uh, to fulfill that, that success. So it was, it was amazing. Big. Yeah, it was amazing. So. And then you went to the Sacramento Kings. You played for a few years. How was that playing with DeMarcus Cousins? You know, he's one of the most uh, dominant I players. Say. Yeah. Dominant <laughs> players, big man. Yes. Uh, I've seen since I've been in the lead. Um, you know, obviously he, he's dealt, dealt with, you know, injuries and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm – I'm definitely positive he's, he's he's obviously doing what he needs to do to get back, uh, get back into the position where he's been. Um, but just playing in SAC for them four years, my first four years, and you know, experience a lot the ups and downs, different game style, different coaches, um, teammates, and stuff like that. It it was tough, um, but at the end of the day, God has his <clears throat> God has his plans, and you know, I'm in a a great situation with the Houston Rockets. Um, obviously, we're in a tough time right now dealing with this coronavirus and, you know, having the right. season suspended right now. And hopefully it get back to, um, get back to Rockland so I can, you know, start my first playoffs. I've never been to playoffs. So uh, this oh, will wow. be big for me just being able to be finally on a team to, to make the playoffs and a great successful accomplishment for myself. Yeah, I mean, you played against some of the biggest names in the NBA. Yeah. Like, you're playing alongside Russell Wilson and James Harden right now. Like, for all the kids out there who just want to know, how is that to be on the floor with those two figures? Like, Oh, man, it's amazing, uh, especially playing with Russ, because uh, I love to get up and down the floor. He loves to get up and down the floor as well. And then playing mm-hmm. with James, 
the, um, space in the floor for him, being able to be ready to catch and shoot for him when guys double team him and just watch James just do do James and just go out there and just be best player out there on the floor every night and just score the ball like crazy. And it's, it's and I, I told him one one day on the bench, was like, yo, like, you know, it's crazy, you know, playing with you and, it, and also crazy playing against you at the time and just guarding you and stuff like that. Um, but being able to see each and every game that you go out here and just give team spits at the fits every day is it's, it's, it's amazing. I don't see nobody else doing the things he do, and it, it's just it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's just crazy to think like you had to face him, and now you y'all get ready to coast in to yeah. a playoff, a nice playoff run yeah. if we get the NBA season back. Yeah. Even next year, you are set up to have a really good season. Austin Rivers, you got. Yeah, PJ Tucker. Like, how's it wearing? Like, being next to PJ Tucker, what do you wear every night? Like, which? How do you decide? What you're doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> next to him and my lock is next to him as well. So I, I oh, wow. I'm like right in the mix of seeing all the shoes he has. His collection is amazing. Um, uh, even gave me a few pairs to rock in the game and things oh, wow. like that. And because I'm, I'm, I started to got like once I got there, I'm like, as far as fashion, my fashion, like I was able mm-hmm. to. You know, show off my fashion a little bit more because knowing the Rockets and, and, and the guys that I was going to be a part of are fashion, high fashion guys. And and then for shoes, I know, you know, P.J. Tuck is one of the big guys for a shoe collection. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, I want to try to, you know, have a few few uh, crazy kicks out there on the floor as well. And, you know, I try to do that this year and, but it's not topping P.J. Tucker, man. And he's a great guy. He's a great vet. He's very experienced. You know, we have a great locker room. You know, with Tyson Chandler being the, the veteran guy on the team and Tavo and, you know, four arms, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. But we have a great team, and, and, and hopefully the season get back going and we can get back to business. Yeah. How does it feel? Like, what kind of advice have they given you, especially some of the older veterans like Tyson? Like, what have they just sat down and told you over this last season that you've been with them? Really just, you know, especially they they know situations I've been been in throughout my career. Um, and it's just all about finding the fit. And I finally was able to find a team with the right fit that would be able to let me explore my game as much as I can. And obviously just staying ready and staying patient and, you know, staying prepared and, you know, just going out there, just playing my game every night and just not worrying about mistakes, making that because with Houston Rockets, you know, you're going you're gonna to have mistakes and, you know, Coach D'Antoni let you play through the mistakes and your, your teammates as well, James, Russ, PJ, and let, they, they understand the mistakes, but you got to play through them. And, and they, they trust, trust, uh, trust us to go out there, just play hard as we can each and every night. All right. And who's been the toughest player to guard in the NBA for the time that you've been in it? Oh, I always get this question. Um, (laughs) But I always say the same person, James Harden. Obviously, you know, just he makes it difficult, especially being a a lefty. Um, Mm -hmm. His his size as well. He's he's strong. Um, Obviously, he he has a great handle. He can shoot the ball. He can he can just kill you in different ways, but. Obviously, he's just a, a hell of a player. Definitely. So I also know that you're a rapper. Uh, that's a hobby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're putting them on, jumping on this. That's, that's, what made you want to start rapping, just dropping, like, little songs here and there? Um, well, I kind of, like, start playing, um, playing with it in college in Kansas. Um, I bought a laptop with me and my, my teammates and stuff, and – and it was crazy because I wasn't the person that's rapping. It was my teammates. They was rapping. I was just doing, like, the hooks or something or making, like, doing the ad libs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So they used to call me, like, the hook man, the ad lib man and stuff like that. And then I was just like, let me give this a try. But I've never been the guy like to rap. My little brother was a rapper. Uh, obviously, I have a label. I have an artist named Coop DV. So I was never – the rapper, like I'll just play basketball. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's still what I do, but this is just something that I, on my free time, I, I like to, you know, like I, I'm good. I love music, so I'm an air for music and things like that. So when I hear something, and you know, obviously got better over the years, but 
but yeah, um, started in college and, and obviously you start, I got better each and every day, each and every year, obviously. And, you know, and I put out a few songs. I even made a song, a draft pack like a couple of weeks ago called Pandemic 19. They're just talking about the mm-hmm. situation we've been doing through this pandemic and, you know, coronavirus and stuff. And just talking about it, how, what we're going through, obviously, and stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, I have a label. It'll be, my, it'll be like a year now since I had it, since I dropped it. So I got two artists on the label, Coop DV and uh, Lil One Finesse. All right, tell me a little bit more about Coop DV. Coop DV, yeah, he, he's like a brother, man. He's like a brother uh, that's part of the label. Obviously, uh, my little brother was going to be signed to the label as well before he passed. Um, so really it's just, you know, Coop been a part of the family as well. Um, and he wants to continue to um, help fulfill my little brother's legacy and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, and Coop has always been a rapper, um, even when I first met him uh, through my little brother and stuff like that. And and I just knew from the beginning when I first heard him saying, I just knew like he had, he had, he has it. He has the talent in it. He has the gifts and craft and stuff like that. So over the years, we grow their relationship, their brotherhood. And, you know, eventually when I started this label, you know, my brother and Coop was going to be on it. Um, you know, my, you know, once my brother passed away, it was, it was tough for us. And, and Coop was just down to like, yo, look, I'm, 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 I want to be on the label. You know, just, you know, I want to do it for YM, you know, on, on, on some family stuff, you know what I mean? So I was like, let's get it, you know, let's continue to do it. And, you know, the rest is history. We just dropped a new single called mm-hmm. I Don't Know, featuring one BPZ and Lil Duke from YSL. So we trying to continue. Oh, that's big. Yeah, so we trying to continue to build the name and build the brand and continue to get more exposure and, and things like that, so. Okay, you say you had one other artist. I couldn't yeah. catch his name. I'm sorry. No, it's a she. Oh, it's a she. Yeah, so Lil One Finesse. She's from Chicago, but she's been living in um, St. Louis and stuff. She grew up with us, me and my older brother. She grew up with us in, uh, in Wellston, but she's from Chicago. Um, versatile as well. It's amazing. Uh, I would never think I have a girl artist that can do the type of things she can do. It's amazing, so... The one from that, she just dropped her first mixtape as well about a couple months ago. They're still popping. Uh, called on one on one finesse, so you can go get it on iTunes as all as all on iTunes and stuff. So, as well as that's Coop DV, I don't know, new single, all on all platforms. So, okay, so you in Texas, you got you got lines to Megan Thee Stallion, you're trying to get her lines to Megan <laughs> Thee Stallion. You know, they just dropped that remix today, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um. Uh, so yeah, but like I said, she she she's amazing. She's talented. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of people like her versatility and what she does, you know, for a girl. So um, I'm I'm we working so much on different things. Obviously, in this situation with the coronavirus and stuff like that, we stay at home and quarantine and stuff. But it's just, it's a time I told them it's a time where we find more material. We continue to write um, and things like that. Finding the, the right sound you want and things like that. So just game planning right here and trying to come back and drop to drop some nice singles and things like that so okay and uh the last thing i want to talk to you before i get to their questions i got a lot of questions about basketball skills and things mm-hmm. going on down here um you have account you have the foundation the kevin mclemore foundation mm-hmm. and you recently put out that you all were trying to get ppe to hospitals and other businesses were you successful in doing that yeah and, it, and it's still it's still going on uh, my manager has um has done a great job with that, um, reaching out to different companies and, and hospitals and things like that that will be able to have access to these masks and stuff like that, uh, which is great. And it, it just started when I woke up one one morning and I just told my, my manager, like, look, I want to try to do this. I want to try to find a way we can help these, these nurses and doctors and hospitals to uh, when they're around these patients that, that's uh, have these have this virus and stuff like that. So, um, and we and he definitely he right away found a company and, and the rest is history. Now we are able to help as many people or people can know where to reach and get it for 
of, of nothing. You know, it's, it, it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, they say you can go, in, you know, eBay or whatever, and, and it's like $20 for a mask. You know, with these, you probably, it's like 3 or $4. You know, that's, that's right. you know what I mean? That's that's enough work, you know, these hospitals can can afford. So, or be in a position where, and I'm, I'm donating this stuff as well. Um, but yeah, and it's all through Kevin Lackamore Foundation, obviously named after my little brother. Mm -hmm. so. And then you also do the Stop the Violence yeah. here in St. Louis the weekend. When can we expect that after the coronavirus is uh, wrapped, you are not as plan As of right now, still stand plan. Uh, the, the dates are August 5th through the, uh, 5th through the 9th. Uh, so okay. still still on board. Um, and still, uh, it's uh, when I say August, yeah, August, August 5th through the mm -hmm. 9th. So it's still on go, still on go. I haven't changed anything. I didn't postpone anything because I, I, I truly believe things will get back right and, and we're going to continue to have our summer that we want. Um, so I'm excited because um, this this summer will be real nice. I think everybody will um, enjoy this this year's now, this Stop the Violence weekend. Um, it's just so much activities and so much fun mm -hmm. things that's going on and stuff. So I'm hoping, I'm praying every day that, uh, that it continues. Um, so, so just, it's just everybody stay patient. I know we've been dealing with a tough time right now, but I think we are going to get through it. Okay. And so one other question. I saw the video. It was a kid that came on your lab and he said he was your biggest fan. Yeah. How did that feel? Like somebody was crying to see you, like. You you always dream of moments like that. You yeah, I kind of like that kind of hit me and touched me a lot, and I was just like, I kind of was like kind of holding in a little bit, like, like don't cry, like don't do that, like <laughs> it's okay, you know what I mean? And but that made me feel like feel special, obviously. And I told him, man, you made my day by you know just expressing his feelings about me and things like that. But I'm always for the kids, and if you know me, I'm always for the kids. I love the kids, and I want to do as much as I can for the communities and for the kids and the youth. So. That right there was touching. <laughs> and so some of the basketball questions down here at the bottom, they're asking you what kind of drills can they do to perfect shooting? You got any advice? Um, really just – see, I, as I got older, I, I used a, a gun these days that um, can just get a lot of spot-up shots. Um, but drills for us, drills, you can always – if you by yourself, you don't have a rebounder, you can always – do the elbow drill, you know, spin the ball up to the elbow, work on your left, right feet. Um, always using your legs into your shot. Um, do both sides. Um, there's just so many. Um, I, I can definitely talk to my uh, my trainer about some different ones. But as far as a shooter, those simple drills, you can do the form shooting to help, um, you know, balance your, um, your legs, keeping your feet balanced and just using your elbows straight all the way up. Um, you can use that. You can use the elbow drills, like I said, and I'm trying to think of some other ones. I think the the basic ones or, or the ones I just said, obviously you want to keep it keep it basic and simple. All right, got another question. You have any advice for anybody trying to get to the NBA? Keep believing. Don't quit. Like word from Nipsey, don't quit. Uh, continue to trust, trust in yourself. Um, you have a goal. You have some. You have a dream. Continue to fulfill it. Continue to work. Whatever you need to do. Continue that hard work and dedication to fulfill that dream. Definitely. And when can we expect the movie? Because your you, your life is like a movie, my guy. You got the kids and the wife now. And man, it's way. crazy that you said that. If me and my manager has, uh, we have been talking about a documentary a documentary mm -hmm. or some type of movie. But I think a documentary would be, would be real nice. And a lot of people came to me about it. And I told them, I'm like, man, I, I even was like, man, I need to, I need to do a movie or a documentary about, about my life and my story. Because when I tell people my story, they just, they just like, they want to see it. Like they, now they want to like, damn. But I always told them if I do a movie or a documentary, especially a movie, uh, the characters that I will, will want to play me is Michael B. Jordan or Jamie Foxx. Um, <laughs> okay. But that means I have to hurry up and get to it because <laughs> they, 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 yeah. they're not getting younger by the day. So, no. Uh, and neither am I. So, 
But yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely, that's something that's been in my mind that I want to do is, is do a documentary or a movie for sure about my story. Okay, well, thank you for checking in. Congratulations. No I think your son turns one sometime soon, right? Turn one in September. He tur- It's crazy. Yeah. My daughter just turned three. Um, mm-hmm. I just bought a new house here in Sacramento. Obviously, it's with the Houston Congrats. Rockets, which is nice. Thank you. Uh, my son turned one in September, and my brother, my oldest brother, Platt, uh, Keith, Keith, get out in December. So it's a lot of good things oh, wow. that's happening for for me and my family. So uh, 2020 hasn't been as bad. Um, so it's, it's still some positive out, 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 outcome coming in 2020. So uh, I want to take every day as positive, continue with positive vibes and things like that. So yeah. Cause I know we're gonna get uh, through this, yeah. this this virus and this corona and stuff. So uh, just continue to pray on it, and obviously stay safe, stay home. Um, and, you know, use this time to spend as much quality time with your family. Because once everything get back to normal, you know, it's back to work. So I, I try to use <laughs> as much as time I can with my family. All right. Well, you said it. That's I can end on that note. Yeah. Hopefully, I can see you, Brad, and Jason all in All Star Game one yeah. day. So, well, you have I'm, a great day. You too. Thank you. Shout out to one hundred four point one.